Colleagues, it's past our scheduled meeting time, that is 5 p.m. As we have already formed a quorum, I now call the meeting to order. Today's special meeting is actually a continuation of the meeting held last time. We have to consider the applications for late membership from 12 members. The letters from those members were circulated to members on the 8th and 10th of October 2014 via papers PWSC 5 and 6 of this session, respectively. I ask this secretariat to invite the members to attend the meeting to respond to members' questions as well as to submit written comments. Apart from Mr. Paul Dare, letters were sent to 11 members to consult them on their views as well as the comments expressed by Dr. Chong Lai Wan on the 11th of November, whether or not those comments represent them. And those comments have already been distributed to you. Up to this moment, no member has responded to those letters or provide written supplementary information on those letters. As regards whether or not those 11 members will attend this meeting, seven of them wrote to me on the 23rd and the 24th to say that it's not necessary for them to attend this special meeting. One wrote to me that that member could not attend today. And there's no supplementary information on their request for late membership. Mr. Paul Day also wrote to me saying that he could not attend. He also said that at the last meeting, he already personally explained his reasons for late applications. And those comments have already distributed to you. The remaining applicants said that they could not attend this meeting. At the last meeting, a number of members expressed a lot of comments on those 12 late applications. I consulted you on whether or not to handle those late applications one by one. Views were divided. Some members would like to have combined debates before voting. Some members said that similar applications could be combined. Other members said that they had no comment. But there's one clear view. That is, we should first handle Mr. Paul Dare's application. Those members waiting for a second round at the end of the last meeting were Ms. Claudia Mo, Ms. Sid Ho, Mr. James To, Mr. Albert Ho, and Mr. Ipcock Him. Well, the first member on the list is not here, so I'll first invite Ms. Sid Ho to speak. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I agree that we should first consider Mr. Paul Dare's application because his views were rather down to the earth because he said that the situation had changed. I don't know what he meant. Maybe they are now in the minority here. They cannot guarantee the endorsement of uh, issues uh, at this uh, panel so or subcommittee. So he was very frank with us. So he would like to join us again. We can no longer tolerate what the government had been doing. Projects eroded by the mainland had been endorsed by members repeatedly and our status, identity, and culture had been changed. For example, the artificial islands in the central waters, Lientang, etc., Northeast development. Society has not yet had consensus. Yes, this time we all joined this PWSC. So the pro-establishment camp cannot tolerate the situation that they're now the minority. They would like to maintain injustice here. So for the pro-establishment members 
They should be as frank as Mr. Potter. They should write in to say that they would like to join the PWC, PWSC again, so as uh, to overwhelmingly reject the views of the pan-democrats. They should not put all the blame on their assistants. That's not fair to their assistants. So, Mr. Chairman, I do not agree that before they put forth their honors to motivation, oh, sorry, motive, we should veto their applications. But for Mr. Paul Dare's application, we can think about it. But then the method can be considered. The pro-establishment camp want us to veto the application so that they can lodge an appeal with the FC. But now the government is uh, starting an overall battle with the public. So we cannot avoid that now. We should be frank. We should reveal everything. If you want to become the majority again, please be frank. But then if you want to put the blame on your assistance, we don't want the assistance even of the pro-establishment members to bear political responsibilities. So, Ms. Sito, you are saying that after members have s spoken, we should first consider Mr. Paul's late application. Yes, um, whether or not we support him we should get a result, and if he is not satisfied, he can appeal to the FC, the Finance Committee. But what about your remaining views? Well, I do not agree that they should put up the reason that is because of the mistakes of their assistants. They did not send in their applications in time. So if they want the pro-establishment camp to be the majority, as in the past, they should be frank with us. What about the other applications? Well, apart from that of Mr. Baudet, unless they write in again, we should not handle the remaining late applications. So you don't want to handle the other late applications today, right? Now, those queuing up uh, on the list, uh, who else is present? Ms. Chan Yun Han. Mr. Chairman, originally I did not intend to speak, but after listening to Ms. Sito, I felt very uncomfortable. And the council, well, please don't talk about battles. We, I have been here for over a decade. Many members had lodged late applications, but in most cases, they could join the committee again. So I don't want to make members feel uneasy, but I feel very uneasy here. We should have mutual respect. If we attack one another, then we cannot say that the other parties are divided. I am just telling my feeling. Sorry, the speaker is not coming through the microphone. Sorry, the speaker's microphone is not on. Well, in the past, they also made us feel very uncomfortable. In the panel for security, we couldn't even discuss uh, policemen beating up the public. Well, please queue up, uh, Ms. Chen Yunhan. Very simple, I won't respond. But I'd like to say why this council has been downgraded to the present status. I very seldom participate in such discussions, but frankly speaking, I feel very uncomfortable. Well, the speaking order indicates that the next speaker should be Mr. Long Kok Hong. Mr. Long, Mr. Chairman, well, maybe you don't know something. For PWSC meetings, Mr. Donald Dung sent me to prison, and that's executed by Mr. C. Y. Leung. I asked Mr. Albert Chan to ask uh, him to discharge duties for me, but he was not allowed to do so in the establishment subcommittee. So what about your yardstick? You use that yardstick to measure others, but when others use that same yardstick to measure you, you don't accept it. 
Ms. Chen Yunhan, why are we divided? Is because 40% of our members are returned by functional constituencies, right? Well, look at this. Society is divided. The Taiwanese society was divided. People rushed into the parliament building because of the students' movement, and then they left. But then after some time, they paid the minimum social price. Was that? That is to cast votes after having meals. And then after the election, the ruling party had to go. Well, for the Occupy Central movement, please have an election. We'd better occupy the votes. We'd better drive him away. So basically, systemically, corruptly, and with your last breath, they're trying to make society divided. I've always wanted to mend the my clothes, but Dr. Chung Lai Wan and the uh, and Mr. Tam Yu Chong tore my clothes apart, and then Mr. Christopher Chong joined them. They tore they tore my clothes and then asked me to mend it, saying that today is very cold. They are just wasting their time. Should Annex one of the basic laws said that we should have had universal suffrage for six years already. So just cast our votes. Well, today we're in a disadvantageous position. We are actually in the majority. If we have universal suffrage, we'll have won over you already. You are the minority, but you are not hardworking. You couldn't enter this PWSC. That's not my fault. Mr. Tam Yu Chung and Dr. Chong Lai Wan, who held you to forbid, forbid, to prohibit you to join the meeting? Where were you? And then you didn't come. You're now blaming us, and you say society is divisive. Will the three of you please give me the reasons? Well, Mr. Long, they're already the members. Well, I mean the party members. Well, ask your party members, why didn't they act as industriously as you? Well, the three of you should be given honors. The three of you, well, you should receive blessings, uh, fortune, and ha have longevity. They should be given badges of honor. So the three of you, why did you come? It's because you're not too shameless. As electrical members, you knew that you had to come to attend meetings. So let's give them a big hand. They did come to our meeting. Well, Mr. Lang Kwok Hong, I'd like you to assist me to handle this meeting. Oh, give them badges of honor, blessings, uh, fortune, and longevity. Well, Ms. Ho, Ms. Sito just said that we should not process the late application save for Mr. Paul Dear. So, Mr. Lang Kwok Hong, what do you think? Why you? I ask you to send letters to those who would like to join. Ask them to learn from the trio, from uh, longevity, fortune, and uh, wealth. Why they came to the meeting the other day? Learn from them. Copy them. How else am I supposed to help you? Well, I heard that you said uh, you 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 talk about a letter. Yeah, send them a letter, uh, telling them, telling those uh, people that uh, this time. You can't help them, and next time, come earlier. Well, there is only one item in today's agenda, that is to deal with the application for joining in relation to the twelve members. Yes, they will have to sit in for every single meeting, and then after we've had the meeting, then they are allowed to join. They have to be punctual, and they have to sit throughout the entire meeting, and they should not fall asleep. Next, Mr. 
Albert Hall. I spoke last time in this matter on this matter. I know that uh, you have to specially deal with the matter first of all with Mr. Paul's application because according to a member is different. Let me first deal with the broad principle and then we'll look at whether uh, Mr. Zay's case will rent a special uh, handling. First, there are already some rules. Well, if they are ill, if they are not in Hong Kong, then yes, they should be allowed to join. That is an agreed principle. Other than these two reasons, as chairman, you said you don't have the discretion to allow them to. Uh, you you will decide whether there is any discretion for you to allow them to join. Then we look at the reasons. And in the past, we've never allowed anyone without a good reason to join late because it's a serious matter. We don't want people to come and go as they wish because it's a complete disrespect of the meeting. You can't stop people from leaving, but it's uh, equally important when it comes to joining. In the past, well, we are not um, lax with our approach. Mr. Lang Kuo-hong's case is uh, a case in point. He wasn't allowed um, to join. If they want to, if they really want to show their sincerity, then they can uh, sit in, but they don't have the right to vote. Now. Well, now is the matter of uh, exercise of discretion. I've read the letters. I was shocked by the reasons they gave. I find them unbelievable because all of them claim that is uh, an oversight of their staff members. But at that time, they've made a decision to not join or it didn't bother them to um, join and then afterwards they want they wanted to join and then they blamed their staff members. It's quite heartless. I don't believe that uh, so many of the uh, colleagues of um, legislators are so substandard, especially when they uh, enjoy higher salaries than others because they are the loyalists. What wasn't expected was that um, a lot of pro-democrats joined, and then when they realized that that happened, they wanted to join and they gave uh, the so-called reasons. Well, you may say that I tried to second-guess them, but that's how I see it. They have to at least be here to explain. That is to show their sincerity and to... Um, be humble. If they want us to reconsider, because uh, there is a change of uh, situation. Well, Mr. De Mr. Paul Day's reason is not a strong one, but at least I appreciate his sincerity. I do not feel so very strongly uh, when it comes to him joining. Uh, people who are honest uh, should be encouraged. Yes. The situation has changed, and now he wants to join. In his case, we will consider. However, for some other members, they still blame their staff members. They are still being untruthful. They refuse to come here to explain. I will not waste time to deal with it, their cases. I've heard you, Mr. Albert Hold, eh, which is your view is uh, almost more or less the same as that of Miss Holes. Next, Mr. Cockham. Oh, I don't know why it's my turn. Eh? Never mind. I find it strange. Well, members are entitled to their views, and it's up to them to accept or not. Well, well, what Mr. Ho is actually saying is he doesn't want to deal with it. If you don't agree with it, vote it down. Are you asked uh, to decide what is the genuine reason? Well, 
Well, you you be honest. Just tell us that、uh, we just want to drag our feet. If you want to join, wait till next year. If you if it's really your true intention, well, it's for the public to judge. Members have already given their reasons. <coughs> Accept it or leave it. It's your own judgment. So, Mister Ives. View is that、uh, there is a sufficient basis to deal with the twelve late applications. Next, Mr.、Uh, Dr. Kokaki. We've spent a lot of time on this. First, I'd like to talk about Mr. Porter's case. I agree with Ms. Sidhole. After we've spoken, we should discuss about his case. There are twelve members. Paul, Mr. Porter is the only one who appeared earlier to state his reason, and he was willing to、um, answer questions. Unlike some other members, he did not blame his assistant, as we've repeatedly said. Well, if there is a genuine reason, don't lie. Don't shift the blame to、uh, your staff. They are paid, but not to be scapegoats. The PWSC is an important subcommittee. Well, in the past, using、uh, your words, Chairman, there has been no、um, rules. There has been a lot of white elephant projects. Say the XRL. There has been constant overspending. It exists in name only, as Mr. Frederick、um, Ma said. This is、uh, not a real high-speed rail, just faster than normal trains. And the Hong Kong Jiu Macau Bridge is another project when there is serious overspending. And in the pipeline, we have the Liantang. Hang、uh, Yun Wai Border Control Point. We are legislators. There are some worthy projects, say for example, redevelopment of hospitals and universal retirement protection. However, for these, the administration has been using excuses not to take them up. And there is also the small class teaching. The public find it quite unpalatable. In the past, the PWSC has been a rubber stamp. And today we're here to right the wrong. But some members disagree. They want the PWSC to continue to be a rubber stamp. They want to turn、um, PWSC that can be truly committed to their job to be turned back into、um, a rubber stamp that would just、uh, blindly endorse white elephant projects. If they really want to join. Then what? How come they don't even come to the meeting to answer questions? We can we can help them if they have if they really want to join. We can help them. We can help them、um, to remind them to come to blindly vote for the government, but they don't even show a minimum level of respect. We have to be dutiful and discuss it thoroughly. So unless they come here to give us、um, the reasons and to clear the names of the assistants, we will not deal with these cases. There are eleven scapegoats here. Perhaps more than that, because there may be more than one assistant to a legislator. We have to clear their names, and it gives the wrong impression to the public, like it's、um, a trifling matter that they can、uh, give some, give excuses and shift the blame to their assistant trying to muddle the water. Well, the、uh, loyalists always said that this is a solemn place, so do something solemn here. Have a serious discussion, Doctor Kwok. My understanding of what you've said is that you share the views of Mr. Ho and Miss Ho. <coughs> yes, Mr. Porter was here, so we should deal with his case.
Will I ask you because uh, we, I would like to get more assistance? Because on the 24th of October and the 13th and the 17th of November, we invited these 11 members to attend a special meeting of the PWSC. And as I said, when I reminded you, they chose not to come. If you now ask them to be present before their cases are their applications are dealt with, well then I'd like to hear your view about what the chairman's supposed to do next. Perhaps uh, members who are going to speak assist me. Because uh, well I've re just reminded you their stance. Next Miss An Chang. Thank you for inviting inviting me to assist you, to teach you and coach you what to do. Let me tell you, it's a simple matter. And you hum and haw, you dawdle, you're the chairman. You spend a lot of time on this. It's now December, but it started in October. If this is the way you do things, well, we have an appalling efficiency. If you drag your feet in relation to everything, then it's not good. It is not a litigation when you um, are back when you are a counsel, when you can uh, prolong the the hearing to earn more. Now that there is a group of people who have signed up late. And our decision is to accept, to decide whether to accept their applications. And not, uh, what are you doing? How come your assistant has made a mistake? What do you mean by out of town? Don't ask so many questions. Accept it or leave it. Deal with it with alacrity. Well, otherwise, uh, people will accuse us of wasting time. So, it's a simple. Let's put it to a vote. Yes or no. If you don't want them to join, don't let them join. Uh, yes, Mr. Leung, what would you like to say? A point of order. Uh, please, raise it. Just now, a member said that uh, we are here be, uh, being indecisive. Can the chairman make a decision? Let's put it to a vote. Uh, don't be indecisive anymore. Just now, our colleague had already proposed a direction. Can we vote on that direction? I suggest that we take a vote. In fact, for this round, after all members have spoken, I am prepared to say this. I've heard a few directions. Let me mention them as Mr. Leung has put forth that suggestion. Number one, we first handle Mr. Poder's application. Number two, there's this saying that the other 11 members did not send in sufficient information, so we shouldn't handle the applications today. Number three, Mr. Leung Kwok Hong asked me to write to the 11 or 12. I don't know whether he meant 11 or 12. Maybe he included Mr. Poder. That is, after those members had attended our meetings thrice, then we could allow them to join. I've heard those three directions. And now, Mr. Leung asked me to put all these suggestions to the vote. That's what I heard from you. But our procedure does not have a stipulation for putting motions immediately to the vote. So I will let uh, Dr. Chiang Lai Wan finish her remarks first. Dr. Chiang, Mr. Chairman, normally I don't praise Mr. Leung Yu Chong, but just now he was reasonable. He would like to act swiftly. Yes is yes, no is no. If you say you don't want them to join, just say so. Well, when you act, you shouldn't act undecisively. And if you have decided on something, act. 
character. Don't just sit here and waste time. It doesn't matter you waste my time, but you're wasting public resources and public money. You're wasting taxpayers' time and money. We're now only discussing whether or not we should allow certain members to join the PWSC. Oh, we can allow this, but not those others. Oh, we shouldn't be acting on such nitty-gritties. I am a member. Well, let's have the next speaker, Mr. Lee Chok Yan. Mr. Lee, Mr. Chairman. Well, in that case, let's take a vote. Uh, I won't speak. All right. All right, no more member is on the queuing list uh, and is present. Well, just now I mentioned three suggestions. That's what I heard from members just now. Well, I'd like to see, I'd like to have an indication of your inclination. Oh, you have a point of order, Dr. Lo Wai Kuo. Well, Mr. Leung, would you like to take a vote? But Dr. Chang Lai Wan suggested that you immediately ask colleagues to take a vote on whether or not we should allow these members to join. So that's method number four. That's what I heard from Dr. Chang Lai Wan. That is, we should immediately take a vote on whether or not we should allow the late applications, the late applicants to join. Yes or no? Well, that's not what I heard from Dr. Chang, but Dr. Lo, if that's your suggestion, well, if that's not her suggestion, may I suggest it? We shouldn't drag this on. Whether or not we should accept these late applicants into the PWSC, just immediately take a vote. That is more expeditious. All right, four suggestions. Number one. Dr. Lo Wai Kwok just now suggested that the PWSC immediately take a vote on whether or not we should accept those 12 late applications. I'll invite you to state your stance one by one. Mr. To, well, if my suggestion is supported by all, that would be number four. And that is in conflict with Dr. Lowe, so Dr. Lowe's is gone. Well, I understand. So, members, do you agree that we should first handle Mr. Porter's case? If we agree to that, that would be helpful to me. Then we'll proceed to considering Mr. Porter's application. And then the other choice is related to the other th 11 applications. Members were of the view that there's insufficient information, so we shouldn't consider them today. If this option is supported by all, then we don't need to continue, right? Do you agree with my understanding? Mr. Ip got him a point of order. Mr. Ip. Do we have the power to refuse to consider colleagues' applications for joining the PWSC? Maybe we should consult the legal advisor. Otherwise, we will be setting a precedent. Either we reject the applications or approve the applications. But is it uh, in order to refuse to consider the applications? Mr. Ip, what I can see here is that for these late applications, the most relevant is 4B. That is, the, P the PWSC procedure 4B. That is, uh, apart from indisposition or absence from Hong Kong, late Applications have to be lodged with the subcommittee, and the subcommittee shall accept such applications only when sufficient grounds have been provided. So I have to ask the subcommittee whether or not the subcommittee considers that there are sufficient grounds for accepting the late applications. Well. 
tabled here or on table here is one of these options that is the chairman shouldn't handle the remaining 11 late applications because of lack of information. Well, Mr. Chairman, you're a barrister. I think you very much understand that we should consider whether or not there are sufficient grounds to accept the late applications. So it's not a matter of considering or not. We should just consider whether or not there are sufficient grounds. So if we consider the reason given insufficient, then we just reject the application concerned. The clerk. Mr. Liang Yuchong. Sorry, Mr. Chairman. As far as I can remember, not yet accepted doesn't mean that uh, we're not to accept the applications. We're awaiting sufficient grounds or reasonable grounds or more justifiable grounds. So this is not a time for considering whether or not to accept the applications. It's just that uh, it's not yet mature for us uh, to accept those applications. Well, if there are no other relevant provisions in the procedure that are against uh, my thinking at the moment, then let me repeat uh, what I think. That is, we have to manifest collective will in acting. It's not for me to decide for you how you should handle the 12 applications. So if the collective will here is that we shouldn't handle the applications today, then as chairman, it's very difficult for me to request you to handle the applications. As I said, I have already spoken my understanding or given my understanding. The Secretariat, any other views? Assistant Secretary, perhaps I should furnish the subcommittee with some information. From what I heard from the discussion just now, Ms. Sito was saying that today there's insufficient information, so it's not appropriate to handle the applications. So she was referring to this meeting. And then in our procedure 39, the PWSC makes decisions on all matters by a majority of the members present and voting. So in simple terms, if the chairman is of the view that a motion has to be decided by the subcommittee, then the relevant provisions will be these two. So that's for members' reference. Well, thank you very much, Secretariat, for its professional assistance. Mr. Ibrahim, well, I don't think the Secretariat has explained the issue. Now here, it is said that the subcommittee shall accept such applications only when sufficient grounds have been provided. It's very simple. If you don't think that the grounds are sufficient, then don't accept the applications. If the grounds are sufficient, then accept the applications. You should not discuss whether or not to handle the applications. Those members have already said that they, ha they will not have any more supplementary information. And you, as chairman, already asked them to submit supplementary information, so the information is clear. As a councillor, you should not speculate on the reasons given by other councillors. The councillors have already stated their reasons. So you are not acting in accordance with paragraph 4B of our procedure. You are adding something to that provision. Mr. Ip, from what I heard, from what you said, 
you had already heard me mention this issue on the 24th of October and the 13th and 17th of November. The 12 members were respectively invited to attend our meetings. For the time being, only one, that is Mr. Paul Day, had attended one meeting. If you want more information, or if you request them to attend, then you should assist the chairman. So you should remember that I've asked this question. At this juncture, I don't think I have any power under the procedure to say that, oh, no, we can't do this if uh, we cannot come up with some down-to-the-earth method, then we have to take a vote. Just now, the Secretariat has already pointed out paragraph 39 of the procedure to us in relation to voting. That is, the PWSC makes decisions on all matters by a majority of the members present and voting. Well, I'm not uh, dissenting on that, but I want you to execute 4B. That's on sufficient grounds. There's nothing about handling or not. As the chairman, you have huge powers. So, legal advisor, would you please advise us? I think on this point, we must have clear legal advice. Mr. Epp, I hope you won't resent what you said. That is, the chairman has overriding or superior power. Well, I have to act in accordance with the procedure. Just now, the Secretariat told us that paragraph 39 is applicable. I don't think I have such a huge power as to override the wishes of all members. That's why I would like to consult you. Well, that's still my understanding. Well, today is rather chaotic. Uh, this in this monitor is rather strange today. Legal legal advisor, do we have uh, somebody from the legal services division? Well, we can ask the legal advisor to come, but for the time being, we don't have any. Well, from the screen, the next speaker should be Mr. Abba Chan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, for Mr. Ipkohem. He might have got uh, partial information, and then he deemed that sufficient for making a decision. Maybe he had not been taken to the police station by CIDs. If police officers ask you questions but you don't answer, for each unanswered question, you'll be given a slap or a beat. So it's just like beating up people in a dark corner. If Mr. Ipkohem is working in the police station, it will be very good. People don't have to be injured seriously, because when questions are asked and no answers are forthcoming, then we can consider that the questions are all answered. We'll look at the university geography professor. He was beaten up very seriously and injured very seriously. So what the police are doing is not what uh, Mr. I I uh, was saying. You should educate the police because if the DAB is to exercise, is to uh, lean on them or uh, try to influence them, I am sure that society will be truly harmonious and people do not have to live in fear. And as to whether there is sufficient information for us to make a decision, I've been pondering on this matter. I may not uh, support them, but, I ob but if we object to their joining, then um, we need to give them more opportunities. Uh, I've uh, had a number of appearance, appearances uh, in the court, and I wasn't given op uh, sufficient opportunity to speak. Perhaps the judge think that I was uh, talking nonsense. Well, at least for the for this group of uh, councillors, uh, 
they should be given another chance. I don't know whether there is an, a mechanism for the assistance uh, to explain themselves uh, because we, I, I don't want them to be framed. We have a culture of uh, fabrication here. We have uh, numerous cases of police are fabricating um, charges. People just went to Hong Kong to shop and they've been beaten and arrested. Well, maybe later when we are doing the yes, Christmas carol, maybe we'll be beaten and arrested as well because we will walk, we will walk up from St. John's Cathedral. I don't want anyone being um, framed, including uh, assistants. Some people say that uh, is the fault of their assistants. Maybe in others, it's not their fault. It needs. Uh, it's better to give them another chance to explain. Next, Mr. Christopher Chung. Have you finished playing games yet? You've been playing games for three meetings. If you are the president, then we're doomed. If you are the chief executive, Hong Kong's doomed. Because you are already killing people before you are in power. It uh, says very clearly in the rule that uh, if there is a, in, suffi if there is sufficient uh, grounds, then then that they should be allowed to join. If there is no sufficient uh, reasons given, then they should not be allowed to join. It's very easy. Put it to a vote. But that's why that's what I was asking. You don't need to ask anyone. You've been a legislator for so long. Really, you're handicapped. They already said that they don't have anything to add. So, support them if you want. Don't support if you don't. What are you playing at? How is it? How is uh, Rule Thirty Nine related related to this? Don't drag the meeting into the, the subcommittee into it. If I were you, I wouldn't have done it this way because I believe in um, representation, and I believe in the freedom of speech. If I were the the chairman, I would convince others uh, to let the legislators join, but not you. You've been dragging your feet. Read out thirty nine and read out four B. Where does it say that you are not allowed to put it to a vote? We don't have to talk about anything else. Don't talk about insufficient information. Climb up, Albert. You just underhanded. Uh, you put a couple of nails on a plank of wood, and uh, there are also nails on um, some cardboards. What are you going to do to me? Members, please do not engage in a direct dialogue. Oh, you have the guts. Tell me to go. If there's a point of order, you can raise it. I am asking you about point, a point of order. Read it out to me again, 4B. What does it, where does it say in 4B that you, uh, you cannot put it to a vote? Mr. Chung, I was asking members because I do not believe that the power of the chairman includes. But nowhere in 4B says you can't put it to a vote. Mr. Ho, a point of order. Given the atmosphere, well, uh, we cannot have a discussion. And I now invoke uh, Rule 33. For an adjourn for an adjournment, he's really worked up. So I will ask for an adjournment. Members, I am chairing the meeting. Mr. Christopher Chung, I am chairing the meeting. Mr. Albert Hold raised a point of order. He says he would like to invoke. Rule thirty-three to adjourn the proceedings. 
So, Mr. Ho, you are talking about uh, an, a German of the meeting or uh, a German of the discussion of a certain item. All of it. So, an a German of the meeting. Uh, you would like to say something, uh, Assistant uh, Secretary General? My understanding is that a member would like to use uh, Rule 33 to adjourn the current discussion. My view as the clerk is that uh, it's an internal matter. I think 33 is in relation to proposals, uh, fin funding proposals of the administration. So, Chairman, you will have to decide whether Rule 33 is applicable. My view is that 33 is in relation to funding proposals of the administration. Mr. Ho, today we, there is only one item. So anyone is entitled to ask for an adjournment with good reason, whether it is a funding proposal or other matters. There's no reason that it cannot be adjourned simply because it's an internal matter. Well, if that is the case, and if it applies only to government proposals, then I don't think it is reasonable. Maybe it's just that uh, in the past, it's only used on government proposals because ne we've never had a meeting in which we only deal with an internal matter. Miss Mo, I'm not from the legal sector. And I just want to speak to you from the eyes of a layman. If this rule it gets only government proposals, if you t if you tell me about the legislative intent, well, maybe um, it's legitimate, but it is not reasonable. If that is the only reason that there is this rule, then it is indeed worrying. So um, I'm, I uh, have great reservation. Sorry, let's hear from Mr. Lowai Kok. Today's item was set by uh, the subcommittee or chairman about an internal matter. And if someone wants to ask for an adjournment, whether it is in order or not, in the eyes of the public, it will be ridiculous. And the PWSC told the administration that there are 89 uh, items to deal with, 21 of them are carried forward from last year. If we had the time, it should have been used on dealing with the items that will be more constructive. However, the time is now used to decide whether members are allowed to join. We've spent a number of meetings on it. The fourth option is that uh, we've had a number of discussions with whether they have supplied sufficient uh, information. So all the information is in front of us, so we need to decide, we need to vote on it. If you want to make, if you want to hide behind uh, the rules, then it, um, puts us in a very bad light. A lot of people in the construction sector are worried that if these items are not speedily dealt with, it won't just affect the construction sector. It actually adversely affect the long-term well-being of Hong Kong people. So this meeting should not be adjourned. And we should swiftly put it to a vote to decide whether 
these members are allowed to join. Thank you, Mr. Lowe. First, I'd like to point out to you that I've agreed to the administration's request to have more meetings. There are altogether five hours of meetings in December. And in relation to a shortage of work or a gap of moratorium in the construction sector, well, were it not for the fact that the administration has withdrawn um, a large number of items, we would have uh, dealt with it more swiftly. This already been mentioned previously. Well, some members have indicated they would like to speak. Let me tell you my inclination at this moment, and I will seek your further assistance. I specifically ask Mr. Uh, Alberto about using Rule 33, whether it is an adjournment of the discussion of a certain item or the meeting itself. He said it is the meeting itself and not a certain item. Well, if it's about an adjournment of an item, then yes, we can ask questions as to whether we are discussing about a resolution. But what Mr. Ho said is an adjournment of an entire meeting. And it seems from the wording of the rule that Mr. Ho's suggestion should not be ruled out. My inclination is that uh, I will allow members to speak for no more than three minutes in relation to Rule 33. Having said that, I would like to hear further from the Assistant um, Secretary. Decision of the uh, Chairman should be final. It's so said in Rule 27. And I'd like to remind members the the role of uh, the PWSC, which is stated in paragraphs one and two, and when it comes to paragraph thirty-three, that is uh, in relation to a member when speaking on a proposal. So. We have to decide whether we are whether members are speaking on a proposal, or <coughs> members are dealing with an application for um, joining late in accordance with four uh, B. Oh, yeah. I would like to spend some time to understand the words of the assistant secretary. I'd like to ask the Assistant Secretary whether or not this is what he meant. That is, uh, for the first sentence of paragraph 33, a member when speaking on a proposal in the subcommittee may move without notice that discussion on an item or further proceedings of the subcommittee be now adjourned. You actually meant uh, that at the moment there's uh, no such a proposal on which members are speaking. Well, Mr. Chairman, that is precisely about the first sentence of paragraph 33, and that sentence is relating to financial issues. And Mr. Albert Ho was referring to a certain discussion. For the PWSC, very often when we mention proposals, we mean the proposals in government papers. And Mr. Chairman, you've already noted the mention of that in the procedure. So if the Chairman is of the view that members are speaking on a proposal, then the Chairman can invoke this sentence of paragraph 33 and the ultimate decision rests with the chairman. 
Well, if I have to seek assistance from the Secretariat, perhaps I should suspend the meeting. But as we are already in this stage, I'd like to ask the Assistant Secretary a final question. I've read the procedure. Apparently, the word proposal. The Chinese word "gin yi" has not been defined. Am I correct? Your understanding is correct, Mr. Chairman. Paragraph、uh, two of the procedure says the Public Works Subcommittee of the Finance Committee is established. Blah blah blah, and then it's also mentioned proposals presented by the Financial Secretary. So that is where the word proposals is cited. All right, you have all heard the assistant secretary. Now, three members have raised their hands to speak. Any more? If not, I'll listen to those three members first before making a decision. The three are Dr. Kwakaki. Mr. Abato, perhaps、uh, today we shouldn't discuss my proposal for an adjournment.、Uh, I withdraw that proposal. Well, <laughs> that has made things simpler. Otherwise,、uh, I really have to scratch my head. The assistant secretary may have a point there, and then I may need some time to come out with a ruling. So, if Mr. Abato. Is to withdraw his suggestion under paragraph thirty-three. Then we no longer have to handle that point. As regards the options that I previously mentioned, I'd like to consult you. Now, if there's no objection, I intend to proceed like this. Now, three members have raised their hands to speak. Are they speaking on paragraph thirty-three? Oh, you're saying. Well, Dr. Kwakaki said that if Mr. Albert Hall withdraws his proposal, then he has nothing to say. Mr. Kohim, Mr. Chairman, my suggestion is simple. You, as chairman, should request the legal adviser to cons to advise us on whether or not it is in order to handle Mr. Porter's. Request. I would like to have a very clear legal advice. The issue is simple. If those are interested in our meetings, they all know that the opposition camp、uh, just wants to drag things on. They want to drag things on until the end of the session. So, if you are interested in doing that, if you don't want to follow the normal procedures, then we can also have our way. Mr. Chairman, I think we must make a majority decision here. I won't take part in the vote. If you want to take a vote, by all means, do so. I'd like to put on record that I now formally request the legal adviser to provide us with legal advice on one point. That is. When the PWSC handles paragraph four B of the procedure, in handling applications for late membership, that is for joining the subcommittee late, can the subcommittee, by way of voting, decide that the applications not be handled at a particular meeting, Mr. Ip? Is that the legal advice that I you would like to seek? Well, you mentioned one meeting only, but what I meant was whether or not we could refuse to handle the applications. So you are asking whether or not the subcommittee has the power to decide not to handle late applications for membership. So, legal adviser of the LegCo, would you please provide the chairman with the legal advice as soon as possible? 
Mr. Li Chaoyan. Well, Mr. Chairman, my understanding is that、uh, we are not saying that we don't want to handle the applications. We just want them to further explain. So we're awaiting their further explanation. So we're not saying that we don't want to handle the applications. So we have to clarify what we want to ask the legal advisor. So number one is whether or not we can handle Mr. Porter's late application. Mr. Porter has already explained his case. We can take a vote on his application. As for those members who have not yet explained their case, we can continue to ask them to explain because we don't want to see their assistance being aggrieved. Well, they may still turn down your request, but it's not true that we don't want to handle their applications. Well, Mr. Li Chaoyan, you know. What we're doing, but Mr. Ipo Him asked me to seek legal advice. Well, on his request, I can act accordingly. But are we facing that circumstance prescribed or described by Mr. Ipo Him? We can make our own judgment. Mr. Li Chaoyan is saying that that's not what we're doing, but still we can seek legal advice. Well, Mr. Chairman, you have spoken my mind. Well, I am really pleased by your remark. Oh, the legal advisor has arrived. Legal advisor, would you like to give us legal advice? Here and now, if so, please be seated here. Sorry, the speaker is not coming through. The microphone is not on. He is not speaking into the microphone. The speaker is not speaking into the microphone. The speaker has not turned on his microphone. Well, legal advisor, please let us have your legal advisor.、Uh, sorry, please let us have your legal advice. Sorry, Mr. Chairman.、Uh, just now we heard an issue on which you would like to seek my assistance. That is in relation to paragraph four B of the PWSC procedure. Well, you are. Whether or not your understanding and execution are correct, I heard from the assistant secretary. His explanation about this paragraph, which was mentioned in past meetings in the council, I think we should understand the paragraph holistically. So I'll invite you to start from the first sentence. Earlier, some members asked whether or not the sentence is related to the discretion of the chairman, and we've offered you brief advice on this so-called discretion. I can clearly say that discretion can only be exercised on two occasions, and then. If members read the last part of. Line two of the paragraph, you see, a request for late membership on grounds other than indisposition or absence from Hong Kong shall be put to the subcommittee. Shall, shall be put to the subcommittee and to the chairman. But the time and pretext are not mentioned here. So. In exercising his duties, the chairman has to assess the situation and consider certain factors. The factors to consider are whether or not the subcommittee is ready to make a decision. Then the chairman. Can ask members to state their position. Now, the second sentence of the paragraph is a request for late membership on grounds other than indisposition or absence from Hong Kong shall be put to the subcommittee. 
And of course,、uh, the sentence is referring to the applying members. My understanding is that this sentence is to find the subcommittee. That is,、uh, it's only on one occasion that late membership request for late membership should be accepted. And there must be sufficient grounds, grounds other than indisposition or absence from Hong Kong, and the subcommittee has to make a collective decision. So, Mr. Chairman, I I believe that the advice that you would like to have from me. If members would like to have further clarification, I'm very pleased to. Assist, Mr. Ibrahim. Well, there is a motion to refuse to handle the applications. So that's the point on which I'd like to seek legal advice. The legal advice is very clear. If、uh, you consider the grounds insufficient, just reject the applications. If the grounds are considered to be sufficient, then accept the applications. It's very simple here. Accept such applications only when sufficient grounds have been provided. I don't know why we should consider whether or not to handle the applications. Well, just now, Mr. Lee Chia Yan has already clarified his point. He actually wants to invite those late applicants to explain. A little bit more before he can decide whether or not there are sufficient grounds. That's what Mr. Lee Chok Yan said. So in front of us is not a motion to refuse to consider late applications for membership. Mr. Lee, is that what you meant? Yes. Well, maybe I can formally put it like this. If Miss Sito considers all right, that is, the subcommittee invites the late applicant, late applicants, to explain their grounds, such that the subcommittee can make a decision on their applications. Mister Ibrahim, Mister Lee Chia Yan has already stated. His option, that is the option he has put forth to us, Mr. Ip, Mr. Chairman. Apparently, this is not the first time you are asking the same question. You are asking the same question for the third time. So it's meaningless. Is it that next time you ask the same question again, and then next next time you ask the same question again? So that's tantamount to refusing to consider the late applications. Well, I think your English is good enough to understand that situation. It's meaningless. It's unfair. I'm not going to engage in the debate with、uh, members here. Well,、um, legal advisor came down first、um, available moment he has, and I see the hand of Dr. Kwakaki. Perhaps we will hear from Dr. Kwak before we hear from the legal advisor again. I would like to get a clarification from the legal advisor. He's made two points quite clearly. First, acceptance of late application should be.、Um, One that is based on sufficient grounds. Miss Ho said that at this stage, there is no way for us to have sufficient information to accept. So there is、uh, not enough information. Out of the eleven members, none of them appeared in person for us to decide whether there is sufficient information and sufficient grounds. 
We should do our best, albeit difficult, to invite these members, save and except Mr. Zhe, because he appeared once, to appear. Let me put it this way. Before they attend a meeting to give, to explain their reasons, the subcommittee has no power to make a decision on whether to accept their application or not. I think that is in line with more what the legal advisor said. We need to have sufficient we need to give sufficient time for the applicants to convince the sub subcommittees that there is sufficient ground for them to be admitted otherwise uh, is not a good decision we have mr albert hold and mr lowai kwok or oh, not mr ho take his name out please mr lowai kwok let me hear from Mr. Lowe first. Well, it's very clear in 4B that uh, that uh, there should be sufficient grounds before the subcommittee accept the applications for late membership. If they choose not to appear to explain and if they uh, refuse to give further information, then we can deal with the applications on the grounds that there is insufficient uh, ground to refuse or there is a sufficient ground already uh, to accept. This is perfect, perfectly reasonable and legitimate. There has been a number of special meetings. And if members want to sup uh, supply more um, information, they would have done so. If, they, if we invite them again, what if they don't turn up? We already have had a number of special meetings. We have reached a stage when we have to deal with the applications. Delaying further is, unfound, is uh, not grounded. Legal advisor. We've had a number of meetings, and these are the facts. Do we have sufficient grounds to put it to a vote without waiting any further? Now let's hear from the legal advisor. Allow me to first go over some um, principles that we should abide by. Well, it is a, in fact, a deliberation on an item. How long should the deliberation be? Is a decision for the chairman to make. The chairman will make a decision based on objective. Um, grounds or uh, rules and procedures, say, for example, sufficient grounds. is an abstract um, standard that cannot be quantified. The chairman will have to, based on this standard, to decide whether um, the the matters are related or not, and uh, whether it is uh, a digression.
when the chairman is of the view that is the suitable time after sufficient discussion to to vote then is uh, for the chairman to decide some members mentioned about specific situations, say for example in the past there are certain instances. That's a part of our deliberation. Chairman, these are factors to be taken into consideration before you arrive at your final decision. Thank you for your advice. Well, I see that some members would like to speak. Uh, let me tell you what is on my mind. I told you that on the fourteenth of October, the thirteenth and the seventeenth of November, we invited the eleven members to attend the special meeting of the PWSC. However, they t most of them turned us down. Only one, Mr. Pose, attended, and I've asked you. Given that, what's the point of asking them? to come because they will just refuse us. So I, I incline towards dealing with these applications. And of course I have to hear further from you as to how we deal with it because there are many different options. Some said that they have to be done separately and some of them um, said that it should be voted on as one item. Well, now I have heard from the legal advisor. I think that if we invite them one more time, they will not turn up. So my efforts will be to no avail. So now we have to deal with it. I uh, incline towards dealing with the applications. Mr. Lee Chuck Yan? No? I've told you what I have in mind. So unless uh, members would like to render me further assistance, my decision is that we we deal with the twelve application applications for late membership. Because even if we invite them for the fourth time, they will not appear. So there is uh, no point in delaying further. Now I have made a decision. I would like to hear from members. There are twelve applications for late membership. There are two views. If I missed anything, please remind me, Clark. First, consider them one by one and after a joint debate. Two, vote on the individual applications and have a separate debate. So there are um, diverse views. So now, how do we deal with it? Join debate and uh, in the, and vote on individual cases and um, voting and then separate discussions. Dr. Kwakaki, well, well, I agree with you, we have to deal with the applications, but uh, well, it's almost the end time of this meeting. We still have 35 minutes. Oh, Miss Ho made a suggestion. We should respect that. Chairman. Well, if we are to discuss on whether to deal with them separately or not. It means that uh, we are not going to adopt Miss Hall's suggestion. Perhaps we can mix them into one. There should be sufficient grounds 
to convince members to choose one over the other. And there is insufficient information. And I don't think uh, their reasons are very clear, especially when they blame their assistants. So you're not going to deal with Ms. Ho's original suggestion? I think uh, the original suggestion was uh, very good. We are magnanimous. We may be turned down uh, numerous times. And we still need to give them sufficient chance to explain. But if most members would like to give them another chance to invite them to a, to attend, I think it's more appropriate. And are we going to deal with what Ms. Ho suggested, Dr. Kwok? I made it clear after hearing from uh, members on top of the advice given by the legal advisor on the under on the interpretation of the rules i made a decision i opine that we should deal with the late the 12 late applications so it's past what you've said. My decision is to deal with the applications. What I was asking you is how? It's not that I will not deal with Ms. Ho's suggestion. I was asking whether uh, we should adopt Ms. Ho's suggestion, that is, uh, to deal with uh, Mr. Paul Zay's application first. If that is the case, then we will formally deal with it. And as to the remaining 11 ones, I will hear from other members. It's not that I don't respect what Ms. Ho said. I've asked members a number of times, and I, with the assistance of the legal advisor, I made a decision. This decision is to deal with the applications. Unless there are reasons that will change my mind, but it will be difficult because I already made a decision. Ms. Sidho's option is to handle Mr. Paul Dez's application first before proceeding to the others. So if members so agree, I'll proceed like that. It is to handle Mr. Paul Dez's application first. Ms. Sidho has raised her hand. Mr. Chairman, let me repeat what I said at the beginning of the meeting. Perhaps just now some members, some colleagues have not arrived yet. Well, all along, the pro-establishment camp would like to maintain a majority. They have speaking rights here anyway. We always go to various subcommittees and speak, even though we're not members. We can speak. It's just that we don't have voting rights. In the past, be it the PWSC, the FC, or the ESC, the unfair majority caused projects that had not been sufficiently discussed in society and insufficient consensus has been reached in society to be passed. It's just like the XRL costing $60-odd billion. At the beginning, it was hurriedly passed. We were not even allowed to ask questions. And Lian Tang, the boundary control points, the artificial islands in the central waters, etc., etc. 
a lot of、uh, political issues behind all these, and some people were saying that they wanted to combine Hong Kong with Shenzhen into one city. So they want us to pass those projects hurriedly, and now with no. Agreement between the Pan Democrats and the pro-establishment camp. We worked very hard, and we managed to join the subcommittee. Well, they can actually lodge appeals with the Finance Committee. I would like to ask the legal adviser whether or not the FC chairman could override the procedures. That is even for grounds beyond those two stipulated here. Their appeals could be allowed or upheld. I think the legal adviser should go back and do his own work in advance. Well, they want to maintain an unjust majority. So be frank with us. You want to join the subcommittee because you want a voting rights. Your speaking rights are always there. Your speaking rights are protected all along. Mr. Sito, sorry, Mr. Chairman, give me one more minute. So please be frank with us. The objective of the pro-establishment camp is very obvious. That is to have a, an unjust majority to protect the government. Projects with no consensus but conspiracy would get through. Rather, Mr. Porter's letter was clear and easy to understand. So we should vote on it, whether or not、uh, we support it. We can still handle it. As for the remaining eleven, they should not put the blame on their assistants. Well, in the past, they had rejected your invitation, but I think we should handle Mr. Porter's application to show them that if they are honest, they will get responses from us. But of course, the pro-establishment camp will say that I'm speculating on their motives. Well, let them say so. So we consider Mr. Porter's case. We either support it or reject it. Then, when they go to the FC, we'll see how the FC chairman will handle these late applications. Mr. Li Chiang-yan has signified his wish to speak. Mr. Li, I hope that you can focus on this subject of how to handle these twelve cases. I think Ms. Sitho's view is to handle Mr. Porter's application first. Well, Mr. Chairman, I would like to understand what you mean by handle. I agree that Mr. Porter's case should be handled first, but it's not true that we're not handling the remaining eleven. Well, we handle Porter's case first, in order to indicate to the other eleven that we must have a basis for discussion. If we only see grounds that. Frame their assistance. We would not be satisfied, and we would like them to further elaborate. Well, at least Mr. Porter put up、uh, some reasons, so we can handle his case first. Well, Mr. Chairman, you don't want to be rejected once more, but can you accept my sincerity? We are being sincere. We hope that they can further elaborate. So, Mr. Chairman, would you please explain what you meant? Well, my thought is like this: If there's no objection, we'll proceed to handle Mr. Porter's late application. After that, if we still have time today. Within the scheduled time frame, then we can decide whether or not to handle the remaining eleven. Just now, I already said that I would 
handle the remaining 11. Oh, yes, there is a sequence. The next one would be Mr. Andrew Long. That is, after handling Mr. Paul Dare's application, I'll handle Mr. Andrew Long's application. Unless members decide to discuss the remaining 11 together and to vote on them together. Well, the sequence from the secretary is Andrew Leung, Wang Ting Kuang, blah, blah, blah. So that's how I would go about this. Well, say, to cite a casual example, when we're on Mr. Ms. Sari Lee's application and it's time for us to finish, then After 7 p.m., after finishing this meeting, I'll invite them again, the remaining eight again. All right? I don't mind being rejected once more. That's how I would go about it. Mr. To, I would like the legal advisor to assist us. Can he turn his verbal remarks just now into a written document? to be circulated to us. And then after receiving that document by circulation, we can further decide, because some members are not present here. But of course, Mr. Chairman, if you want to proceed even without a written document, then it's entirely your decision. Well, the legal advice has always been highly efficient. And when he entered the conference room just now, he already tabled a very brief document in front of me. Can you circulate that to us? Of course. Well, legal advice, I wonder if you want to further supplement. Well, four English paragraphs here. Jimmy, would you please tell us? whether or not you want to circulate this uh, document now or after you have elaborated your position. Well, I'm here to serve the subcommittee and the chairman. So whatever you say, I'll do it. Well, my verbal remarks just now were actually based on the four written paragraphs that I submitted to the chairman. And all our remarks have been recorded and the Secretariat can provide the members with a verbatim report. Well, my remarks are to assist you, Chairman, to make a decision. But as far as I understand, you have already made a decision. That's my understanding. Your understanding is very correct. And I don't think any member here has any misunderstanding. I've already decided to proceed to handle these 12 late applications for membership. Dr. Kwakaki, Mr. Chairman, just now I clearly heard a question from Mr. Ho. If some members here or if some applications are rejected, the re related members will go to the FC for further inquiries. Well, this is uh, relevant, Mr. Chairman. That is, uh, how should we proceed? In this subcommittee, I don't want to decide on something without sufficient discussion, and I don't want to make a casual decision with some members absent. We would like to have mature deliberations. So, Mr. Chairman, so Dr. Kwakaki is saying that he would like to know the whole workflow and to receive the circulated legal advice before starting to handle Mr. Paul Dare's case. In my opinion, this is not directly related to Mr. Paul Dare's case. That's my inclination at the moment. 
But of course, this is a brand new situation. New, new, new. Did I make myself clear enough? New, new and old. New. Now this situation is new, so I won't treat myself as having understood everything. So, if any member has any advice for me, he or she should do so now. Otherwise, after this meeting, we can await the written legal advice from the legal advisor, and then we can proceed to discuss. It's still not late. Now we're eighteen minutes from the scheduled end of the meeting. So unless we decide to discuss all the cases together and to vote on them all together, it is impossible to complete everything within eighteen minutes or ten odd minutes. But I don't want to waste these ten odd minutes. Well, I think Doctor Quox and Miss Sitto's views are related to the legal advice that we have received, but that will not. Affect my decision to handle Mr. Porter's case, and our voting inclination will not be affected either. In order not to waste the remaining time, I suggest we first handle Mr. Porter's case. If we still have time, then we'll see what should come next. Mr. Ibrahim, Mr. Chairman, I. Hope that if you have decided to proceed to handle the case, then you should follow the procedure. Obviously, some members would like to drag this on. The members should understand the procedure themselves. If they have、uh, comments or, or queries, they should raise them with the legal advisor. Yes, you are correct. That's what I am prepared to do. So let's proceed to. Handle Mr. Porter's late application for membership. Does any member wish to speak? Oh, Mr. Sun Chong Kai, Mr. Chairman. In my personal opinion, Mr. Porter's written. And verbal remarks at one of our meetings had stated his grounds, which are at least convincing to me. So I would support accepting his application. What about the other members? That is,、uh, Mr. Porter's application for late membership. Does any other member wish to speak, Doctor Kwakaki? I incline to us agreeing with、uh, letting Mr. Porter join us because、uh, he did not put the blame on、uh, assistance. He said that、uh, he felt that there is a change in the situation and he would like to join and he and he showed that he respects. Other members, he sat here for one session and he answered members' questions honestly. So uh, I uh, support his application and I ask other members to accept that as well. Mr. Lang Yuchong, I do not agree with Mr. Jae's reason about the change of sit、uh, situation. He should not make a decision based on whether there is a change of situation. He should only think about.、Uh, he should only concern himself with his role, not the win or the situation. It doesn't mean that I don't support、uh, his joining the、um, subcommittee. If he can make clear. What, he, what role he would like to play, then I may consider accepting it.
If I see that he would like to do something as a legislator in this subcommittee, it's difficult for me to object. So uh, if he can show that, then, uh, then I may accept his application. Next, Mr. Lam Kwok Hong. Thank you. My mother always told me that, uh, well, you don't undo others are the wrong that they have unto you, undo to you. In relation to my position, well, I wanted to move a motion because I was uh, about to be sent to prison, and that is uh, in relation to the this subcommittee. But my hands were tied. I could not move the motion. Mr. Albert Chan took the mantle. He sympathized with me. Well, that, well, that is that is the establishment of committee, not this one. And he wanted to to help me join the ESC. And that is the right thing to do. So it's actually right to help a fellow legislator. However, uh, in my case, no one helped me. Then how come you want to change the president and allow the members to join? Mr. Porte gave a reason. But it's not as strong as the one I gave. The the one I gave to support Mr. Albert Chan's joining on my behalf. But I was vetoed. I don't uh, really talk to Mr. Paul Day much, but I st I want to support him. He's quite articulated, and if he was here, then I would uh, be able to hear him trying to convince me if he's eloquent enough. But he's not here. But he was here last time. Well, I asked him, and uh, and if he accepts my invitation, then that's fine. You can ask Mr. Poa Kim. Well, um, if you have uh, maybe under the table um, and deals, uh, of course it happens. It's only a matter of whether you do it right. Well, I asked Mr. Leung Kwok Kong to withdraw what he said. Please make a decision, Chairman. Listen to me, Mr. Ip Kok Him. Yeah, I heard you name him, Mister. Uh, you um, said that uh, there are some um, under the table uh, deals, and you mentioned Mister. If Kim is if Kim found that offensive, uh, would you withdraw that what you said? Well, you misheard me. I said, of course, there'll be underhanded um, deals. Ask uh, Mister. If Kim if that would happen. So now I'll, I ask him. So now Mr. Leung clarifies that um, would there be underhanded uh, under the table deals? Ask Mr. Ip Kok Kim whether uh, that will be the case. But that's not what he said. Listen to the recording. Well, if he wants to ask me, then he should ask. But if it's only a question, then it's easy. Well, let's listen to the recording. Maybe we uh, are being forgetful because we're getting on. I'm now dealing with uh, what Mr. It uh, said. It's a point of order. Miss Small, you want to get involved?
Sorry, I、uh, spoke in a loud voice to Mr. Leung just now, and、uh, I me- I mention about、um, about under the table deals, but he、uh, mumbled something. I couldn't hear him. Could you listen to the recording, please? Let's listen to his tone. If, Mr. Ip, you think that、uh, what he repeated is not what he originally said, then I would need to listen to the recording. I did not hear you clearly, Mr. Ip. What would you like to do? Ask him to clarify what he said, Mr. Lam Kwa Kong. Perhaps、uh, you will say it again. So, what did you say? I said. Said,、uh, well, um, just. Personal favors? Well, it happens all the time. Does it happen to you? So I said, "Is everyone, including myself, when there are personal favors?" <coughs> Just now, Mr. Leung Kuo Kong、uh, said that、uh, that was what he said originally. Well, if that is the case, then、uh, I would not complain if indeed that is what he said. But we all knew what he said. But if he now changed his version and said that's what he said, well, then that, let's leave it at that. Well, to start with, then let's not dwell on it. Mr. Leung. Quote Council has、um, just over a minute. You want to finish it? Well, it's just、uh, very simple. You should understand. Well,、uh, if you haven't done anything,、uh, then you wouldn't mind when someone、uh, refer to it. But、uh, if you have, if you don't have a clear conscience, then it, you really mind about. When about it, when peop, some some other people mention something similar, well, I have to thank Mr. Pode. He did not vote me out. So if he came back, then I would consider, because he he might remind me that the last time I did not vote you out, and、uh, will you return the favor? Well, okay, no under the table deal. Then can I say、uh, return the fa- return the favor? Well, what do you say,、uh, Mister Mister Cockham?、Uh, everyone will、uh, everyone will get engaged in under the under the table deals, and well, everyone will would like to return the fa- the favor, Mister Cockham. I thought you were the chairman. Because you acted like one. When you clasp, when you clasp your hands together.、Mm, well, <clears throat> just、uh, overrun by just a few seconds. If someone asked、uh, for a division, then there would not be time. This is the PWSC, but it's not for me alone to decide whether to extend the meeting. Let me ask you, what's your view about an extension?、Well, please、uh, raise your hands if you object to an extension. Keep your hands up. Eight. Those who agree that I should exercise the discretion to extend the meeting, please raise your hands. So most members think. The mem-、uh, the meeting should not be extended. I have to listen to members, because according to the、uh, the rules of the PWSC, I、uh, have to listen to members, even when it's about an extension. That being the case, we will have to find another time for another special meeting. In the meantime, two things will happen. One, we shall we vote on the, Mr.、Uh, Paul Dare's application. Okay, those who are 
There are no other questions, right? Those who are in favor of Mr. Jess uh, joining, I ask for a division. Well, then we don't have time. Well, let me finish what I was saying. Before we find the time for the next special meeting, two things will happen. First, as the chairman, I will send letters to the 12 members and ask them, well, and tell them once again what members have said in the meeting. And we'll see whether um, they will revise their decision of not attending. And I will ask the legal advisor to submit written legal advice on what to do in the future and uh, about what we've talked about. We will find a uh, a meeting time as soon as possible. Mr. Kwakim. Well, I, I basically I agree with you. And uh, first of all, when will the meeting be? Two, are we going to go to, into voting immediately? And number three, should you have specified in your letter that they definitely will not supply further information because it will be meaningless uh, if they ask if uh, we keep to t if we keep on talking about supplying further information i think the clerk has heard you about your third point and in relation to when the next meeting will be it will be just like the last time it will be done by circulation the second question is a yes next time straight after the meetings in order, we will de we will vote on Mr. Porter's application for late membership. There being no other business meeting adjourned.